Uh, oh, no, you got to chuckle. Let's hear it. Chuckle. Uh, I, I, that cracks me up because a uh, friend loves it all the time and a brother is born for adversity. When I went into high school, from my eighth grade to high school, I wasn't in there a week. A teacher came up to me and said, you know, you better tell your brother. I said, wait a minute, right there. I don't tell my brother nothing. <laughs> 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 you want to tell my brothers, I'm you tell them. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. 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 Amen. University there. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. Then your brother would have got on you. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. This is this verse in Proverbs. Pro, go to this one. Look at Proverbs twenty-seven seventeen. This is a hard verse to live by because nobody, our human nature does not like this verse. Proverbs twenty-seven seventeen. Iron sharpeneth iron. So a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. What is, what is that verse telling us? Huh? Correct it when he needs it. Oh, we... If you really have a true friend, when you do something wrong, he will correct you. If he doesn't, he's not your friend. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. See, a good friend will do that, and uh, you can either take it, take it or, and use it for God's glory, or you'll get mad and never talk to the friend again. One of the two. Okay? Huh? Yeah, it's, all, it's a, lot, a lot has to do with how people approach it. Oh, how you approach it. Yeah, of course. Of course. Yep. Yep. But we, uh, but we are to sharpen each other. And if you, and as friends, we need to do that, okay? And, and, when, and if, it's, it's, if it's done in love, and it's done in the correct way, then the response will be okay. I believe the response will be okay. But, but that response, that brother or sister could take it, or she can take it or leave it. He could take it or leave it, one of the two. But at least, uh, you know, a good friend is going to look out for a friend. If he sees something wrong, he's going to tell him. All right? Because sometimes there's things in our lives we don't recognize if other people do. I want to know. Because it's for my good. You said things to me that I have to sit back and look at and say, yeah, look at that. Yep. And then a lot of times you read Proverbs or you think of Proverbs in chapter 1. Yeah. Yep. It's right there. We need to uh, uh, practice that in our Christian walk. The tough part is to do it without being too critical. Because we could always find fault with something. But, yeah. But it, it's meant to lift up. Yes. Not to tear, tear down. Tear down, right. Yeah. And that's the approach again. Yep. I love that you said you can always find fault with something. You can't. Absolutely. Just as easily as you can find a blessing in everything. Well, there you go. And something positive to say. Yep. <laughs> yep. It's just a matter of which outlook you have. Yeah. You can change your outlook. Yep. Yep. Amen. Amen. I think we need to we need to work on that a lot because this this world is so negative. Amen. The minute you walk out these doors, it's like there's nothing good. Nobody says anything good anymore. Just to take the parallel off what Jen said, is that we can't change other people. Sometimes we have to change our reaction and look at ourselves and hold the reaction. Can't change that. So you might have to change the way that we're going to change. Right. Yeah. That's yep. Hard to do. Yeah. All right. Verse three. Grace be to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, notice Paul's being criticized. This call's being challenged. They're questioning his authority. They're questioning his call on God. And what's his response? Grace. 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 He's not saying anything bad about them. That's Christianity. But what's his answer? He could have got back. And said, you know what, people? Oh, he could have. He had, and he had every right to do it. But he says, "No, I'm gonna. I'm gonna respond in grace." And the first thing out of his mouth is what? Grace be to you. <laughs> to that church, grace be to you. Okay. In other words, Paul is saying, "I wish the very best for you people." I wish the very best for my brothers and sisters in this church. 
You see, Paul wanted the believers in Galatia to experience the grace and the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ that he experienced in his life when Jesus met him, met him on the road to Damascus that day. And I want you to notice the words. Again, you see the deity of Jesus Christ here. He is placed side by side with God in this verse. Side by side. Notice the word, number one, grace. Grace means, as you all know, undeserved favor and blessing of God. That's what grace is, the undeserved uh, favor and blessing of God. Uh, we did not deserve it, but uh, he gave it to us anyway. And that key word is uh, undeserved, okay? Man does not deserve the favor. He cannot earn God's approval and blessing at all. God is too high and man is too low to deserve anything from God. Man is imperfect and God is perfect. Therefore, man cannot accept anything from God unless he gives it to mankind. And he did at Calvary. Amen? Amen. And he gave it to mankind. At man. See, man has rejected, has reacted against God too much. The natural man rejects God, right? The natural man rebels against God. He ignores God. He neglects God. And the big one, he curses God all the time. He disobeys God and questions God. See, that's mankind. We don't deserve the grace of God when we act like this. We don't deserve it at all. You ever hear that uh, definition of grace and mercy? No. Grace is similar. To, it says grace is God giving to us what we don't deserve. That's right. And mercy is God not giving us what we do deserve. Do deserve. Amen. Uh -huh. Nice, huh? That's that says it perfectly. Yeah. Yep. Amen. Thank you, brother. Sounds like marriage. Sounds like what? Marriage. <laughs> Sounds like marriage, yeah. Yeah. Listen. Uh, Romans 3.24 says, Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Grace. 2 Corinthians uh, 8, 9 says, For you know that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might become rich. Isn't that a wonderful verse? 2 Corinthians 8, 9. What a wonderful verse. And not only does God supply the, that grace for salvation, but it continues after salvation, right? Philippians 4, 19. But my God shall supply all of our needs according to the riches and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. All right, so it continues. So grace. Paul responds to them, Gra grace to you. Number two, then he says peace. Peace here means to be bound, to join, to weave together with God and with everyone else. Uh, it could be, yeah. That would you would do no ju any harm to the word by by saying that's agape love. Um, but what's it? Uh, peace is very important because um, it means to be confident. It means to be secure and yeah, in the love of God in agape love. That's yeah. And so um, he's telling them, you know what? Enjoy the love and the peace of God in your lives. See what he's doing? What's, what's Paul doing with these words? If I may, and to me, I, I'm just sitting here in amazement because I've read this numerous times, but I see Paul addressing Jews in the synagogue, telling them, your salvation is through Christ, not through works, not through your yeah. uh, tradition and your, your law and everything else. And, you know, saying it so eloquently that they're probably all feeling really good about it. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Mike? I was just thinking. That's that good. He's saying no, to have peace. If you have peace, you're not going to be offended by something that he says. Yeah. Yeah. 
So he's got to go forward and say things that he's got to correct them. Yeah. You know, throughout this process.